This week's Garage Band Weekly, it's all about you. Yes, it's your questions coming at me. So if you're here live and you have any questions, just put the word Q. In fact, I've made it easier. Look, just put Q in front of your question and I'll answer any questions that come through here in the live chat. Watch you on the replay. We love you just as much. Put your questions down in the comments. On today's show, we'll be looking at some news and notes. It's quarterly earnings time. So that means we get to find out if the billionaires have got an extra billion dollars in their uh, bank balances. But we'll also be looking at merging in GarageBand Mac. Is it possible? Not really. We'll explain what that's all about. And uh, as well as mastering in BandLab on mobile. I'm going to be doing it for the first time live here on the show. All that and a bucket of fish on GarageBand Weekly. Let's do it. Yes, I'm a professional, you can tell by that smooth, silky smooth transition that we have there. Uh, yes, uh, thank you again. Welcome to Garage Band Weekly. We'll jump into the news and notes. We'll say good day to the folks who are here live, and then we'll jump into all of the different segments that we've got planned for you here today in just a wee jiffy. But I hope you have had a good weekend. I hope you're ready for another big week of creating, and we'll be talking about all things Garage Band. And look, if you were here last week, I've been testing all day and uh, everything seems to be working and it's worked for over an hour in testing, which means it's pr probably going to fail any moment now. But uh, let's just give it a quick test run here and make sure audio is all coming through. Looks good. Sounds good. We're working, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, hello to the folks who are here live. G'day to Joe Stahl and to Thomas Christ. Hello to Mark Bro. I hope everybody is having a fine and dandy day and do say g'day in the chat. And like I say, if you've got any questions, let me know. I've got some questions that have come through during the week that I'll be chatting about uh, as well as we go through. And the show today is brought to you by me. It's brought to you by the GarageBand FAQ. If you jump over to studiolivetoday.com slash garageband, it's going to drop, jump, drop you. It's going to drop you straight into here, and you can check out my ten dollars Garage Band Beginners Guide there. That's the only thing that's paid for on the whole page. Everything else is free, free, free. So I've got all of my playlists there of free videos, and then the complete guide here to all of your questions. So if you're asking about something, if you're like I've never really understood EQ, we'll come on down here, check out EQ, click on the link, it'll take you over to my EQ video, and uh, I'll start talking to you all about EQ. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use EQ there you go. in Treadmill. On the I Treadmill sighting. Some of, the, some of the videos are from the archives. Some of them are classic, so you can check those out there as well. Uh, let's jump into the news and the notes of the week, shall we? Because there's been, uh, like I say, there's been not a lot of garage band news. We haven't had any new packs. We haven't had any new updates. iOS has been pretty stable. We're kind of waiting for the WWDC from Apple to find out what's happening next in terms of new Apple stuff. And, uh, of course... In terms of hardware, we've we've had everything, haven't we? Haven't we? Maybe. Uh, my my daughter my daughter was leaving for school this morning, and she says, "Dad, when's the iPhone 14 coming out?" And I'm like, uh, "Probably September, honey. That's when they usually come out." And uh, then I, I thought about, it. "I'm like, why why do you want to know about that?" And then I'm like, "Oh yes, because she's got my iPhone 6s, and she would like an upgrade. So I'm sure she's waiting for a new iPhone to come out so that I can go and now buy it, and then she gets an update." Yeah, sneaky, sneaky. All right, let's let's talk about a few news and notes because speaking of Apple, speaking of billionaires making billions of dollars, uh, yeah, Apple have uh, posted revenue of ninety seven point three billion dollars and a net quarterly profit of 25 billion dollars so uh there's a link uh, an article linked down in the description if you want to check it out and read all about it if you want to get sad and uh, depressed like i am now because billionaires are making billions of dollars but there's a few interesting things in here in case you don't want to read the whole financial report i know it's not everyone's jam but um there's some interesting stuff in there in particular the fact that uh, despite the fact that the tech sector went down 13 percent uh, overall uh, apple are uh, continuing to go up. I mean, that graph that you just saw there is pretty epic. They, they, they're, doing, they're doing good things. And they're about the only sort of 
only company in the tech sector that continue to grow at a rate that the market is kind of expecting. The other really interesting thing out of there that's related directly to me, and I know many of you folks, and this is how it relates back to GarageBand, is that of those new Mac sales, so I'll bring up that graph again so that you can have a look, because the Mac sales here are the ones there in the bottom, the green. You can see that they're kind of selling more Macs than they've ever sold before. And look, it's nothing, it's, it's a small piddle in the ocean compared to things like iPhones, which are obviously their main ticket item. But you can see that Mac sales there are definitely going up and services as well. iCloud stuff is definitely increasing. The Apple TV and all the iCloud stuff is increasing there as well. And the interesting thing about the Macs is that 50% of people who bought a new Mac in the last quarter, it was their first ever Mac. So that's a bit of an interesting thing. I know for me, I bought my first Mac about a year ago and uh, yeah, I will probably continue to buy more Macs now. So it's interesting, the the big switch, you know, the, remember the Apple versus PC, I'm a PC, I'm an Apple. That didn't do it for me because I still looked at the price tag and I still looked at the barrier to entry and I still went, nah. But as soon as the as soon as I could get an Apple Mac Mini in my hands for a thousand bucks and it does everything I need, I'm I mean I'm live streaming on it right now. It's doing everything here. It's controlling my studio. Then um yeah, it, it kind of changed things. So I thought that was very interesting there. Uh, g'day to uh, other folks who have dropped on in. Hello to BBS. Is Logic Pro better than GarageBand on Mac? Uh, is better than GarageBand or Mac? Is Logic Pro? I don't understand the question. Sorry. It's uh, Logic is GarageBand Mac with more features. So the way I explain it is that if you're using GarageBand and it's doing everything you need it to, then you don't need to go to Logic. It's not going to make it better. I think this is the misconception a lot of people get is that GarageBand's going to, uh, Logic's going to make their music better. Whereas, yeah, maybe we'll rant on that a little bit later. Uh, hello, Bo, uh, Bofo Covers, GarageBand Covers. I hope you are doing well, my friend. Uh, billionaire's got a billion. That's exactly it. Uh, waiting for the iPad Pro 2022 as this year I'll be upgrading. Yeah, so um, I've, I've got the iPad 20. 20, the the non M1 last version before the M1. Oh, geez, these iPads are confusing with all their numbering and naming. Uh, but yeah, I know Jay's rocking the 2018 iPad Pro, which is still a very good unit. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm also not going to upgrade to the M1 anytime soon because I my iPad Pro does everything I need it to still. The only thing that might push me over the edge is that I kind of want the 12.9 inch. I'm still rocking the 11 inch and yeah. Uh, Apple could buy my football club. Yes, that's the thing. You know, there's uh, they should they should go out there and or any struggling fo footy teams and and, uh, and clubs uh, and businesses they should just prop them up. Weirdly enough, I was uh, I was watching uh, a video this week in tech. I think this week, and they were talking about the fact that um, that Microsoft actually bailed out Apple way back in the day. So Bill Gates literally wrote a check to Apple to keep them afloat because at the time they needed competition. They were under all of this antitrust stuff, and they needed Apple to survive. So that there could be competition. Otherwise, you know, Microsoft and IBM and everyone would take over the world. So, uh, yeah, interesting that uh, you look back on that now and you go, mm, maybe that uh, wasn't the good thing. Uh, wonder how Macs are doing now relative to PC since the M1 came out. Yeah. And look, it's really hard because you kind of have to piece together all the bits and pieces. Look, the, the, the Mac, the last graph I saw that was around Mac versus PC penetration, I mean, Mac's bigger, but it's still, like, I think, less than 10% of the market. So because corporate, a lot of corporate is in PC, uh, yeah, uh, the Windows corporate world isn't changing anytime soon. So yeah, it's interesting, but I think the M1, I mean, the fact that 50% of new Mac buyers and all of those people would be buying M1s. They're buying them for the first time. I can only imagine that at least in the personal market, it's all going the right direction. Uh, hello, I have an idea. I hope you are doing well. Uh, Alonso, I've got some more questions coming in here, which we'll answer in just a moment. We'll just tick off a couple more news items and then I'll, uh, I'll jump in and, and rant a bit more on the questions that we've got there. So, uh, as well as Apple, uh, another interesting one that I thought uh, thought you might want to, to to hear about is Spotify. So Spotify, uh, yeah, a possible slowdown ahead. So their uh, their share price dropped like twelve percent on the back of their uh, earnings, and it's not that they went down. This is the weird thing: they're still growing, they're still improving, they're still increasing, and that but they're just sort of hitting the pause. And, and interestingly, if you saw Netflix, Netflix actually had a reduction they in their subscribers for the first time ever since their existence. And um, yeah, even though Spotify numbers and Spotify users continue to grow, 
yeah, it's it's at less than what they were expecting. And look, we we were waiting for this to happen. Look, this is no surprise to to me, and it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. It's a bit weird that we see all these surprising things because. I've seen this with YouTube and we've seen it with everything. It went up like during 2020, everyone was at home and what were they doing? They were subscribing. Like they, they didn't have the, no one had to spend money on holidays or going out or anything like that, live music. So everyone was hanging around at home and everyone was just doing their thing and, uh, and subscribing to streaming platforms in, in record numbers and watching a ridiculous amount of YouTube and listening to a, a heap of Spotify. So to hear that again, these poor billion dollar companies are now struggling. They're not growing as rapidly as they'd like to. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Um, look, TikTok is the number one app worldwide. Short video content. Um, YouTube's shorts has exploded by like up 400%. There's short video content is kind of taking over the world. And I only have to look to my own children to see that that's the case. How that impacts with music, I mean, I guess it gives an opportunity for a revenue stream. Uh, if you're creating sort of those viral songs in GarageBand and you want to release them with DistroKid and you want to throw them out there onto the platforms, then yeah, maybe you, having TikTok available and, and people using music in YouTube shorts is, a, is another way. Like it can't, it's not a bad thing on the surface. It's just, uh, it's not what I dig and uh, hey they're not they're not creating platforms for a for a 42 year old dude um, I'm, I'm very much the one percent of the 99 percent so as much as i'm not into it if other people are more power to them uh the uh, the, the final thing here is youtube so i did mention it uh, re, re, uh, previously youtube ad revenue growth slows dramatically oh and alphabet misses expectations if you don't know alphabet alphabet are the Google parent company that owns Google and YouTube and all their subsidiaries. So yeah, YouTube shorts now averaging 30 billion views up four times from a year ago. So that's that 400% growth. And uh, yeah, YouTube. So could you get all get out your tiny violins for YouTube, please? Because they only grew by 14%. Oh, and this is the weird thing. Uh, this is the weird thing in the tech world where all of these tech companies, everyone's expecting them to just go on this continued ridiculous growth path upwards, whereas it's just not feasible. It's not sustainable long term to actually continue growing at that rate. So we've seen it across the board and I know that my YouTube channel has been showing the same sort of things. It's slowing down because guess what? The whole world has opened up again and people are getting out and about and doing things again. It's uh, it's 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 just the way it is. So that's the that's the news. Look, I know not everyone's into the financial stuff, but it's interesting to see. It kind of gives you a, a general picture of what's happening. And if you're a musician and you're creating music, knowing kind of, it's like that old hockey thing. I'm talking hockey because the playoffs just started. <laughs> um, but it's kind of that thing where, you know, go where the puck's going. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to be a music producer and you're more concerned about getting views and getting subscribers and getting followers and getting money, I would be going, huh, so Spotify are not growing at the same rate that they were and they're giving a lot of their revenue to large podcasters and other other avenues, so there's not a lot there. But look at these shorts, look at TikTok. Uh, short videos and TikTok are growing big time. So if I'm making catchy kind of dancey kind of tunes that people can use in their TikToks and their short videos on YouTube, maybe that's where I need to be directing. So again, it's, it's about trends and if you care about trends, great. If you don't, if you're more like me and you just want to do what you do and hopefully you fit in somewhere, great too. But it's interesting to, to look at this stuff as well. Uh, hello to Lure Reality. Thank you for, for dropping on by as well. Uh, thank you for being here. Jade says, uh, it's not what door you use or what platform, it's how well you know how to use it. You can choose any door or any platform. Just learn the skill to make decent songs. That's uh, pretty much it in a nutshell, I think. Um, yeah, I, I, I concur. I'm going to have to agree to agree and uh, and then i'm going to go off and on, on a weird tangent in my rant this week which is going to say something a little bit else but uh let, let's go back because there were a couple of questions here that i uh, that i didn't uh, finish yeah fancy seeing me here i know crazy uh netflix has diminished content and uh raised yeah exactly so and, and that's the thing a lot of these platforms are, are changing and same with Spotify, like you can now use Tidal or Deezer or YouTube Music or Apple Music. There's a whole bunch of options. Like the more options there are, then the less opportunity there is. It's kind of like in, in the home recording world, I see more and more creators creating more content. And someone might say to me, oh, Pete, isn't that going to cannibalize some of your views? Yeah, but it's better overall. 
And, and I, I actually want more people to be creating more because it doesn't really matter because if Netflix are smart and if Spotify are smart, they will keep doing things that make that differentiate them from other people. And that, that's what I figure about this. There's people that won't like the way that I present information at all. And that's cool. They'll go off to other people and they'll, they'll get a better experience. And then there's other people that like what I do. And that's cool too. So yeah, I think the, what is it? The high tide raises all ships. And that's the way I look at it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so we'll go back to, to the couple of questions. So BBS that had, um, uh, yeah, so BBS uh, had a question here about Logic. Yeah, Logic Pro X. So let's just talk about this real quick. It is as simple these days as the fact that every device that you run, and I know I've, I oversimplify this, oversimplify this and I get into trouble sometimes, but every device you use, this iPhone is capable of 24-bit and 44.1 kilohertz audio, and actually up to 96 and 192 kilohertz if you use the right apps. But uh, And the same with my Mac, and the same with my PC, and the same with my iPad. In a digital world, it is less about the platform. This is just capturing and more about what you're actually capturing, the quality of the songs you're writing, the quality of the gear you're using to plug into your stuff. And, you know, you've got your adapters here. You can plug any USB audio interface or microphone or mixer into your phone as easily as you can your iPad or your, your Mac or your PC these days. So that part really doesn't matter. Where people get their knickers in a twist is around things like Pro Tool has better, better effects and better plugins, better EQ and better processing. Maybe better or different. I don't know. I think it's just different. I think you can actually, depending on what you're making, you can you can do the same. And because every different platform supports all the plugins, all the audio units or the VSTs or AUs or whatever platform you're using, there are so many plugins that you can use to, to do things. And I just don't I just don't think it's a question anymore. And I think that the only people that are vehemently against the fact that people are using things like GarageBand on their iPhone to create music are those with a vested interest either financially or because they've poured uh, 20 years of their time and effort into creating on a platform and they want everyone else to create on their platform to va validate their decision, to validate their time and their money commitment. So that, that's the way I go there. That's the way I look at it. Uh, let's uh, see. There was another question here. Uh, yeah, so related to that, do you think you can make professional music on iPad with GarageBand or is it better to get FL Studio at your computer? Look, again, and Thomas Thomas Christ has just did a video yesterday about using FL Studio. Thomas uses Logic on his Mac. Thomas uses iOS as well. There's there's really no difference. It's kind of like tools. It's like if you were hammering in a nail, do you want to use a Stanley hammer or do you want to use a tool st uh, Steelcraft hammer? Uh, it depends. Like what feels better in the hand? What has the better weight to it? What's yeah? It's 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 the same thing. What does the tool do? And do you need a fancy tool? Do you need a hundred and seventy four piece toolkit if all you're ever doing is like hammering nails and screwing screws? <laughs> Weird analogy going on here, but you get my drift. You don't actually need a lot of the stuff. And again, I said it before, but because this is a garage band show, I'll mention it again. People say, when when should I upgrade? Like, when, when am I going to be ready to upgrade from garage band to Logic? You know what? Many of you won't ever be ready. And by ready, I mean won't ever need to because everything you need to do is in garage band. Garage band on Mac is a super powerful program. So to to consider going to GarageBand, uh, consider going to Logic, some people just won't need to. I mean, look, look at GarageBand over here. Look at it doing its thing. It's you got you got all the tracks, you got all the plugins, you got all the effects, you got the automation, you got the master track. A lot of people are going to be a hundred percent happy with everything that GarageBand on a Mac does for them, and won't ever need things like uh, other types of automation and like sends and buses. And in fact. Yeah, a lot of people move to Logic and their music gets worse because they get overwhelmed by the options. They get paralyzed. They get analysis paralysis and they're like, oh no, it happened to me. I'm going back to Logic this month. Oh, by the way, that's probably the other news item. I'm going back to Logic this month. So I'm going back to Logic this month to to, to see if I can get my head around it because I, I really dig it. But when I started using Logic, as soon as I started like adding presets and things and it set up different sends and receives and things, it got a little overwhelming. And I must admit, it was fun going back to something simple last month like BandLab, which is what I did last month, just to sort of cleanse. But now I think I'm ready. I'm going to go and tackle Logic again. So watch this space, I guess, is the uh, short answer to all of that. 
Uh, let's uh, scroll on down. We'll see if we've got any other questions because this is the Q and A section. I'll answer a couple of questions that I've had uh, come through during the week that are, that are very common questions in a moment. But we'll see if we've got any other stuff live here at the moment. Uh, Jade Star told a uh, simple thing to change your videos to shorts. Position change to nine. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so let's um. Let's talk briefly about short. If you're interested in shorts, so what do you have to do to, ha to, to create short videos? Well, shorts have to be either 9 by 16 or uh, square. So either 1 by 1 or 9 by 16. So if you're using something like uh, what I would recommend, which is Luma Fusion. Let's bring up Luma Fusion here for a moment because this will be a fun thing to just chat about quickly. I think... Look, I'm, I'm, I'm not sponsored by Luma Fusion at all. Hey, Luma Touch, if you're out there and you want to sponsor the show, give me a shout. Uh, but they have a very, very cool platform. And I actually would say that if you're a serious content creator and you're using iOS, you kind of just need to go by Luma Fusion. I only say that about two apps. I say that about Audio Share and about Luma Fusion. Can you get away with iMovie? And can you get away just with the Files app and GarageBand? Yes. But for the sake, honestly, for the sake of what is LumaFusion is about $30, $35 US, audio shares like four bucks for less than $50, for less than the cost of, I don't know, people always use coffees, less than 10 coffees, <laughs> you're going to get LumaFusion and audio share. And the cool thing about LumaFusion is, so if I'm working on this, so let's say this is a, a video project that I'm working on, to actually change this, it's as simple as going down to my settings down here and changing the aspect ratio. So changing this from 16 by 9 to 9 by 16 portrait, and instantly it adjusts that video. Now for this, is that logical? Like, would you actually do that? Logical, see what I did? Uh, no, probably not, because 9 by 16 for a garage band thing. But you could do something funky here. You could come in here and you could edit this. So you could like crop it down here and just put like that bit in the middle there. Or you could zoom it all in. Like you could you could do some fancy funky stuff. I've seen some cool people doing TikToks and YouTube shorts with, with this where they sort of move around. Because you can all oh, the, the other cool thing about Luma Fusion is you've got all your motion options here. So you could uh, I don't even know what this song is. Um, let's hope it's not anything copyrighted. Let's uh, play it. Because we're all oh, just cool. a work in progress. No and obviously it's messed up my um my little uh, things down at the bottom there. But um yeah, when we come in here, you can um you could move things around. So if I wanted to do some motion in here in Luma Fusion, I can tap on here and then I can kind of move it as I go. So what I like to do is kind of create these little flows where it'll move across like across to the side to show you something else like that. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work super well, but we'll just come out here and show it. So yeah, so you can see how it like scrolls across the screen. So you can set it to, even though I'm scrolling around there, you can set it to. Need a helping hand. There it goes. Because we're all just a work in progress. <clears throat> so you can, yeah, you can do some cool things. And again, you can just keep adjusting your aspect ratio by doing it as simple as that. You can just come in here. You want it to be a square one. You want to do an Instagram video as well. Well, yeah, guess what? You just change it to square and then you re-edit it and everything's hunky-dory there. So I honestly think that. Luma Fusion for iOS, uh, even though you can do things, and I, I like iMovie. iMovie's getting there, but it's it's not Luma Fusion, and I think Luma Fusion is uh, is the best. So good good tip from Jay there, and uh, yeah, good thing to to check out. Uh, hello, the Mix Club. I hope you are doing well, my friend. Um, I can't use Power Beats on GarageBand or iPad. I don't know what Power Beats is. Does anyone know what Power Beats is? Let's um let's see if I can. I'll, I'll Google it <laughs> because maybe it's something cool. Maybe it's something I need to check out. Power Beats. Let's see. What are power, uh, power Beats as in um, uh, headphones. Let's talk about that actually because it was one of the things that I was going to talk about this week anyway. Um, I'm assuming it's that. Let me know if it's not. But there's Power Beats uh, wireless earbuds uh, that, that actually look pretty good. Okay, I'll, I'll, so they're the Beats by uh, Power Beats as in Beats by Dre. Okay, so uh, this is what we're looking at over here. And I don't know if this was the actual uh, question or not, but yeah, so if you can't use PowerBeats on GarageBand or I I iPad, um, it's generally not that you can't, it's that you shouldn't. So I famously bought the um, the 
AirPods Pro recently. Uh, when I say recently, a year ago. And look, I've I've, I've d- damaged them and destroyed them. My own fault. Um, so so I was going to try and take it back to Apple and say, oh, something happened to them. No, I've, I've not treated them well. And, and they look, they're good. They're great for listening. But the microphone on them is not great. So I don't use them for calls and I can't really use them for recording, even audio for videos and things because it's all kind of choppy and the background noise comes in. And the latency. No one has fixed Bluetooth latency. So a lot of people, when they're starting out, they'll say, "Hey, I want to, uh, I want to record. I've got, I've got, you know, two hundred dollar um, power buds, or or, or I've got two hundred dollar AirPods, and they're they're just not working. I can't, I can't seem to sync up my audio when I'm singing with the beat, with the backing track, with the guitars, with whatever. And it's all the latency. It's Bluetooth latency, one hundred percent. So what's my recommendation? My recommendation is Dirty Buds. Um, either buy the ones that I recommend. So if you go over to my gear guide, studiolivetoday.com slash gear, uh, you can buy the um, the ones that I like, which are the, I forgot the names of them now, the Endurance Run, the JBL Endurance Run. They have a really good little microphone and good um, headphones. They're my recommendation. But you know what? You know what I've been finding lately is these things. Yep, your standard lightning buds that you used to get, you don't even get them anymore with your iPhones, but you used to get them with iPhones. They're like 30 bucks or something from Apple. They're really good. The quality of these things is actually kind of ridiculous. And we're going to do a little bit of playing and experimenting with something that I recorded on earbuds, on the old Apple Dirty Buds, which is, um, yeah, you'd be super surprised. So for my, res- my answer now to anyone that says Bluetooth is I'm just going to say, look, Bluetooth, no. Maybe when we get to Bluetooth 7, there'll be enough low latency. Because you can use wireless stuff. That's the thing. You could use a wireless guitar receiver because that all uses like UHF or it uses like other uh, RF frequency stuff. Anything that uses Bluetooth. Bluetooth is just not good. Bluetooth was designed for mice and keyboards. It was bl- designed for low data. And then people realized, oh, actually, we could probably send audio through this data. If we crush it to death, we can just get enough bandwidth to send audio. And even with all the advances in wireless audio and technology, like if you're ever watching a movie uh, on, a, on an iPad and you're hooked up to a Bluetooth speaker, it's never going to be properly in sync. It's just not. And I don't know if it's ever going to be. So I know that was a long rant to go on. <laughs> <laughs> about that. Uh, hello, Mike and Dawn, Janice, by the way. Uh, hello to Kenneth, who's here as well. G'day to you. Scrolling on down. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, talking about platforms, there's so many third-party options. Uh, there, there's no thing. Uh, exactly. Instead of just making music, stop stop pissy, as, as our friend Jamie Mallander would say, stop pissy pantsing about worrying about what platform you're using and just start creating with whatever you got. I don't care if you use a voice recorder on your phone, you'll be fine. Hmm. Do the research, find the door, a door that meets your needs. Yeah. Um, and get on with it. And that's the thing. You don't, before you even do, make sure that creating music is right for you. Uh, I know a lot of people who have got into music creating and they've bought Logic and they've bought a $400 interface. And they've bought a couple of $200 microphones and they've bought the speakers and they bought the headphones. They put up the acoustic treatment. They get three months in. They're like, yeah, I don't really dig this. I might go back and do something. I might go do wood carving now. So start simple. Start with your dirty buds. Start with your cheap headphones. Start with BandLab on your PC for free. Start with GarageBand on your Mac or your iPhone or your iPad for free. You don't need to spend all the money. Just get started. Just do it. Here, here. Yeah, my happiest time was on the four track. The reason I like GarageBand is I kind of treat it like a four track. When I'm creating a song, I kind of just treat it like a four track. In fact, I'll show you that in a moment. The, a song that I was creating, it's kind of like a, a, a short a four track. Uh, hello, Phil. I'm going well. Uh, we're in the Q and A section here, by the way. So if you've got questions, please just put Q or question in front of them, and uh, we'll we'll answer those as we go through. We have a bit of a casual a casual chat here today, and then we'll get into a little bit of a little bit of demonstration stuff. Uh, hello, uh, Buginga Bashir. Uh, thank you for your content, noob. Uh, I don't see much content for recording drums with audio tracks. Uh, to uh, to send to a movie, I have to merge all the tracks to master first, or they show up as one wave. Uh, so, really, so if you're recording drums, really depends on what you're using to record them. Uh, so in this case, if recording drums with audio tracks, yeah. So the reason that most of us record virtual drums, either using uh, drum loops or using a virtual drummer or using um, the MIDI drums, is that very few of us have access to a drum kit, uh, like an actual acoustic drum kit, and even fewer of us have access to enough microphones to mic up a drum kit effectively. So, and look, there's, there's different ways to do it in different schools of thought. So 
you can mic up a drum kit with one microphone and then it's just one audio file in your mix. You can do it with two, you can do it with three to four to seven to 26 if you wanted to. But most of the time, at least four four is kind of where it's at. So usually as a minimum, you'd want something around the kick drum, you want something around your snare and you want some overheads. So you really want at least four. Usually you want something up on the cymbals as well or a couple of other mics are in there. So if you record all those, then you can actually mix them separately. What you can do to sort of practice with that is you can split out your drums. So I've got videos here on the channel showing how to do that. Uh, let's find one, shall we? If we go Pete John's split drums, this will help you sort of learn how it all works. So here you can see I've got my video about separate drum tracks. So this, uh, if you just search Pete John's split drums, this one shows you how to take your MIDI drums and put them onto different channels. So every, each drum on one track. And this is basically replicating what you do with microphone. Not exactly because you don't have like your stereo overheads or anything, but it sort of gives you one tr track, one audio track or one MIDI track in this case for each drum. So that's that's the way that I would uh, sort of start learning about the mixing side because when you're recording acoustic drums, it's basically the same sort of thing. You just bring every individual track in and then you treat it as a separate drum. And uh, yeah, that's the way you can do it. And you could even grab the overall mix and mix it down to stereo and then use that as like your room or your overheads uh, mix as well. So there's some options there for you. Uh, hopefully that sort of answered your question. But yeah, it's a, it's a slippery slope. And again, the reason I don't have a lot of content and not many people do is that there's not many people who are drummers. But um, uh, Ed Thorne uh, is someone who's a good YouTuber. He's a drummer. So he has some drum videos. Uh, yeah, just, just search around because the concept is the same. Whether you're using uh, GarageBand or iPad or iPhone or whether you're using Pro Tools, it's the same sort of thing. You get a multi-track audio interface, you plug in all your microphones, you trigger them all up, you play your drum kit, and then you have all those individual wave files, all those individual audio recordings, and then you mix those to taste and you're done. So there you go. Uh, yeah, four track <laughs> does force you to concentrate on the arrangement and uh, make sure you're writing good songs for sure. Uh, picked up a Fender Champion 600 at a pawn shop today. Really like it. Very cool. I love... What, what have you bought? That's a good question. What have you bought lately? Uh, let's throw a question out there for anyone in case you don't have a question. Anything cool? Any cool gear, secondhand gear, new things you've bought? I bought a couple of old 8mm video cameras. That's weird, I know, but I'm I, I'm I'm into sort of old eight millimeter video eight video cameras, and uh, yeah, I'm doing some projects for my other channel finally uh, in the next couple of months. So uh, I, I got those for that one. Uh, oh, uh, cop, overhead overhead coffee question. Oh, H coffee question. Do you all over the pond drink? Oh, instant. Oh, coffee. Instant coffee or more grind coffee? Uh, while we're having this talk after. Yeah. So um, coffee. Here in Australia, we have quite a big coffee culture, mostly driven by a lot of the Italian and Greek immigrants who came into Australia. They kind of brought with them a couple of really good things. They brought pizza. So we now have really good pizza over here and they brought really good espresso coffee. So most coffee places and most of the coffee drunk in Australia, especially on the East Coast and the South Coast and probably on the West Coast as well, is uh, espresso coffee. Um, but most of us, because like the, the Italians will have the short black, the real espresso, the real stuff that puts hairs on your chest. Uh, most of us drink a lot or a cappuccino, but based around freshly ground um, coffee and espresso with uh, with our milk of choice. So yeah, I, my my fa my Delonghi coffee machine out there. I've already uh, I've already had two coffees today. Probably why I'm talking so much. <laughs> I've already had two coffees. All righty. Uh, yeah, you have to. Watch. This is a good. This is a good point. Thank you for for raising this, Mike and Dawn, Janice. Um, yeah. Be careful at the bottom of your screen. YouTube does like putting things at the bottom of your screen. Here's the thing. You know those really annoying things that pop up at the bottom of the screen? The, the, the ads? They're usually placed by people who choose to put those ads on there. And I wanted to talk about ads on YouTube because I... I get a bit frustrated. A lot of people blame the platform for the ads. But what you need to realize is that we, me, we as content creators get to choose how many ads we put on and where we place them and what sort of ads they are as well. So why don't I give you an example here, shall I? I'll jump into a, I'll jump into a video here. But yeah, the, the point that uh, that Dawn's making is 100% correct because if we if you take a look over here 
at my video. So, and the same goes if you're releasing your own music videos or whatever. If we take a look over here, um, yeah, you see how it's it just got that timestamp there? On a, on a desktop, that's only gonna be a small amount, but that bottom right corner is basically dead real estate. Never put anything important on a thumbnail or a video in the bottom right corner because it's the dead zone. So uh, that, that's an area to, to keep in mind. But yeah, also right along the bottom there, uh, YouTube or they'll often put bottom thirds. If people are using uh, the automatic uh, subtitles, they'll all go along there as well. So you do have to keep the bottom of your videos a bit clean if you want to. But I just wanted to show you this because see how what we've got on here, we've got monetization on overlay ads and sponsored cards. I don't ever put those on. So they're those ones that put a random ad across the bottom of your video because I don't really want to be talking about GarageBand and suddenly a big Nord VPN ad goes across the bottom of your screen. So I don't put those on. Same with sponsored cards. They're those cards that pop up in the top corner. If you notice when you're watching a video, you'll be watching like a killer's video and it will go, Billie Eilish has a new video. Click here to watch it now. A, why? Why? what's the crossover there? And why would me as a creator, why would I want to put a sponsored card on there and send you away to some random sponsor rather than watch the rest of my video? Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Anyway, uh, then we've got skippable and non-skippable video ads. So if I want to only put non-skippable ones, I can do that. I don't. I put both on there so they mix. And then I get to choose whether I have ads before, after, or during. And I was ranting during the week. Let's We'll make this my rant. <laughs> I might rant, do my other rant, but we're going to run out of time here today. If you go here to manage mid-rolls, I can actually choose. So I've choose, chosen to put one ad right about, around about the middle of the video here. So for folks that watch and get to the six minute mark, there's one short ad that plays there and then they get the rest of the video. And it's an 11 minute video. I think that's reasonable. YouTube by default put four video, four ads in this plus the start and the finish. So it wanted me to have like six ads in an 11 minute video. And I said, nah, pass on that one. I'll just put uh, I'll just put the, the one ad in the middle. So whenever you, you, you're hearing from creators, it, it's weird. Uh, I think because you know, they're the billion dollar companies, sometimes we're a bit tempted to throw them under the bus and say, oh, you're seeing ads, oh, no, it's, isn't it terrible? Secretly, <laughs> I put them all there. Or uh, I didn't remove them, which is more, more the case. Uh, we've got coffee chat here, grind. I was all about French press, but it's a pain in the... I know. And that's why my, when I say grind, I don't even hand grind my coffee machine. I just throw the beans in there. I press the button and it grinds them and puts them, turns them into espresso. It's delicious. Love it. Love it a lot. Uh, it's getting hard. It is getting ridiculously hard to find wired headphones. It totally is. Um, the, the one pair that I love and that I will keep recommending to you, if we go over to my gear guide... Uh, but yeah, you're right. It is really hard to find them. But the ones that you can find most places, you can definitely get them on Amazon. And uh, I've found them like places like JB Hi-Fi here in Australia or your electronic store of choice. Uh, if I go to my mobile setup, do I not have them in here? I have to go down to my headphones. Uh, headphones. These ones here, the JBL Endurance Run. They're about a $20 headphone usually. Let's see what they're costing right now. Look at that, $18.99 in stock. They are beautiful. They've got these nice sort of similar sort of style to your, your AirPods Pro in terms of having the plug-in bit and then the actual sort of bit that goes in your, your ear hole. Uh, you've got TRRS connection there, which you can plug directly into a headphone jack or more likely into your little dongle so that you can live the dongle life. But these things punch ridiculously above their weight. They sound really good and um, they they just deliver. So I, I've usually got about three or four boxes of them sitting in my drawer here because look, like, a, like all wired things, the wires here aren't exactly super thick. They don't last forever. So I do have to replace them from time to time. But that's, they're my go-to. If, you, if you're looking for an option for your wired headphones, that's what I would go for, for sure. All right. Oh yes, Mark's the French press. So that uh, that makes sense. Not just because you're French Canadian, but I've seen I've seen you rocking uh, rocking your studio live today merch with the uh, the French press. Uh, the US, of course. Yeah. Uh, oh, the the good thing about the US is like those bottomless cups of coffee that you get at like cafes and diners and things. The bad thing about the US is those bottomless cups of coffee that you get at cafes and diners and things because it's terrible coffee. I don't want lots of terrible coffee. I want one really good coffee. Why am I whispering? I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. You'll grow with your door and when it doesn't do what you want, change. Spot on. <coughs> Four tracks. I never got past them. iPad is the same, but better. Exactly. It does the same sort of stuff, but just better. 
Absolutely. All right, I'm going to scroll down because I'm, I'm way behind. We've been talking coffee. We've been talking other things. Hello, Omni Collective Creativity. Uh, question, is this stuff available in YouTube Studio on the phone for people with monet or uh, phone for people with monetized channel only? So that the... Um, the, yeah, the monetization stuff I was talking about, the, the ad placement, you do have to have a monetized channel. That's a good point. You do have to be part of the YouTube Partner Program, which means you have to have at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time in the last 12 months. So I know it won't it won't be relevant for everyone. And unfortunately, uh, lately, YouTube have decided, and they don't do it all the time, they don't do it often, but sometimes they'll place ads in videos that are non-monetized, and then they keep all that revenue. So go figure. <laughs> I'm not going to bite the hand that feeds me. It's amazing that YouTube serve up all my, all my ramblings and don't ask for anything in return. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So the ads are only part of the YouTube Partner Program, um, and you. So you can control it to a certain extent in the mobile app. So uh, why don't we? Since the questions are coming in, and since this is a Q and A show, uh, and since um, I'm missing the hockey anyway, I'll, I'll watch the West Coast games later. I'll uh, I'll bring up YouTube Studio here on my iPad, and I'll show you what it looks like over here. Since technology seems ish to be working today, ish. All right, let's see if I can go into that. That same video, just so you can see what options we get over here. Video analytics. Um, I'm just trying to remember. Okay, go to edit, 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 edit. I'll just see what editing options that we have in here. So let's let's show ya by jumping over here to the eye pad. Boom. So this is that same video we were just looking at before, this band lab mastering video. This is in YouTube Studio on my iPads. Exactly the same on the iPhone. Uh, so yeah, monetization, if we go into here, yeah, so you got basically the same thing. The only hard thing is that it, if you're setting up mid-rolls and things, that's really hard to do here on the iPad. That doesn't really support that option. But in terms of everything else we have in here of all of the ability to change your, change your description, to change all of the tags. So it... I mean, the monetization is not going to be relevant, but if you are a mobile creator, definitely make sure that you have the YouTube Studio app as well as the YouTube app. So there's actually two apps on iOS when it comes to YouTube. There is the regular YouTube that you're probably familiar with. And here's the weird thing. If you want to upload a video, you got to do it from YouTube. So you got to come here and use your plus button there and upload your video on the YouTube app. But what I do, never upload as public directly from this YouTube app. Upload it as unlisted and then make sure you grab the YouTube Studio app, which is this one, because what you can do with YouTube Studio is come in here and do all your editing. So you can come to YouTube Studio, find that video that's been uploaded. In fact, let's let's show you an example because I've got a video that's coming out uh, tomorrow which is this one here, how to remove, <laughs> I'm moving from a muse to a distro kid uh, for a couple of my songs. So I'm showing you how to take down a release. So there's my thumbnail. This is all set up here. But what I'll do now is come in here to this edit and I'll set up my title. So I'll make sure that the title uh, and the description and everything is right. I'll come in here, add its playlist. I'll come in here to my tags. So I'll add a bunch of tags uh, in there as well. And then when I'm ready for it to go public, I'll come here to visibility. I'll change that to public and I'll hit publish. That's the best way to do that. because then, And you can even schedule it. So especially if you're releasing, say, a music video, you've created something in GarageBand, you want to release it as a music video, that's what I'd recommend you do is upload it. If you're doing it all on mobile, you can, and I do um, a lot of the time, but make sure that you're using the the, the right app. Make sure that you're using the, the YouTube app to upload it because you can't upload from the YouTube studio, which makes no sense, but hey, that's what it is. And then uh, using the YouTube studio to customize it. And there are some things you can't do in the YouTube studio app, which you need to actually use the um, the mobile uh, browser. But, but here's what you do. Uh, should, we, should we just show this? Uh, no, it, it, we're getting too far off track, but go to your Chrome or go to your Safari, go to studio.youtube.com and then request desktop version because you can't do a lot of stuff in the mobile version. You have to go request desktop version and that's kind of the workaround or the hack. Anytime you can't really do something that you want to do, go to the desktop version uh, and you should be able to do it. All right, uh, let's uh, let's continue on. Oh, just got the Sen Sennheiser 650. Love them, but hate the cable, really. Uh, yeah, have, let me know how they go. Because, um, yeah, I've obviously got the 280 Pros. I've heard good things about the 650. They're the open back ones, yeah. They're, the, uh, they're nice for mixing and mastering. I have heard. <gasps> hey, it's Gary Hubs. Hey, Gary Hubs. Hope you're doing well. You have 16 premieres scheduled. That's too many premieres, surely. Surely that's it. 
Uh, yeah, still can't add cards, correct. So you still can't add cards on mobile and end screens you can do, but they're clunky. You can do all that stuff, but you have to do it in the desktop version of the browser. It just, it's so much easier to do on, uh, I, I don't like saying it, but there's some things that are better. Unfortunately, I haven't found a good way to do a live stream like this from mobile because just having two 24-inch monitors in front of me is about the only way I can work. And until iPad supports multiple external displays, which it could if it chose to, but it doesn't. Uh, well, technically it doesn't really, but you could dongle out and have multiple displays through HDMI and USB-C. But anyway, I digress. Uh, that's one thing. So live streaming, I still basically use a laptop or a desktop for live streaming. And um, yeah, being YouTuber creator, I like it's so weird. It's so backward that YouTube shorts is the biggest thing on YouTube now. And you can do all these YouTube shorts things. But if I just want to add some, some cards or add some end screens to a video that I've created for YouTube, I can edit it on my mobile, I can shoot on my mobile, edit on my mobile, upload on my mobile. As soon as I go to actually enhance it, I've got to jump on my desktop. It's kind of ridiculous. Anyway, uh, folks have the 650 clamp on the head. To me, it's a big melon. They seem fine. Oh, cool. Yeah, I've heard that too, because I've got the big melon. That's why I use the uh, the Sennheiser HD 280s. I've found the AKGs and the Shores and other ones have the little round cups and they're really tight on the side. These ones have the big, the big, whoop, that was classy, the big oval shaped cups and the really comfy padding that just sits on the outside of the ear. Complete isolation, great for tracking. So that's why I, I just haven't moved on from these, the Sennheiser HD 280s. Uh, yes, desktop, exactly. Hello, Wild Rose CC. Hope you're doing well. You came in just in time to watch me try and destroy my face with, uh, with uh, the headphones there. Where are we at? 45 minutes. We're going long here. We're going into overtime. It must be hockey season. Speaking of hockey season, let's, let's, let's check the scores, shall we? Because I know that's what you're all come here for, is for, for me to, to watch me sit here and check hockey scores. Ooh, the Hurricanes are up 2 nothing over the Bruins, and the Leafs are up one nothing over the Lightning, and have a 5-on-3 power play. Well, there you go. I thought the Bruins would crush the Hurricanes today, so uh, I'm, I'm way out of whack. Way out of whack. Um, let's go back to my notes here and see where we're up to. So... I was going to rant about change being good. I think we've kind of we've kind of already talked about that point, but uh, we'll do it in we'll do the the sixty second rant here. I used BandLab last month, and I found it really refreshing to try something different and something new. And it actually got me back to the point where now I'm actually champing at the bit to get back into Logic and try something. So I really just wanted to say that to say. If you are struggling, if you're feeling like you're in a rut, try something new. And look, can I suggest BandLab? Because I've got a, a complete four-part video series showing you exactly how to use BandLab, uh, at least the, the browser version of it. So it's worth trying something different. So as much as I harp on about use what works for you, you know, don't just use other doors, other, other um, options just because... Sometimes there is a really good because, and the because is you're feeling stale and you're feeling like something should change. And a change is as good as a holiday. And if you're anything like me, you ain't had a holiday for a while and you're probably not going to have one uh, anytime soon. Uh, yes, it is champing at the bit. Believe it or not, it is not chomping at the bit. Um, people think it's chomping because they think the bit is the bit you put in the horse's mouth and the horse chomps at it. But the actual expression is champing at the bit. Go figure. I know, right? Learn something new every day. English language. Cray cray. All right. Uh, to, 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 where are we at to? Yeah. Let's um let's play around with a few things. So I wanted to I wanted to do some mastering. I want and I'm gonna do a couple of fun things here, because why not? So let's um let's load up GarageBand here, shall we? Garage band. Because what I want to do is I want to play around with the mastering on BandLab Mobile. Because I reckon for a lot of you folks, I've shown in previous times uh, I love mastering using Final Touch. I like Grand Finale. I like Audio Master Pro. You can master directly in uh, GarageBand iOS. But BandLab Mastering, even though the, look, the limitation of BandLab Mastering is that it's 16-bit, so keep that in mind, but I'm actually really liking the sounds that I'm getting out of BandLab Mastering. So I'm going to actually try and master, uh, master my song Toxic Ego in BandLab Mobile to A, see how it works. I've never done it before. And B, see what it sounds like. So you want to join me? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's jump over to the iPad. <laughs> Here it is. So this is my song, Toxic Ego. Um, you've probably heard it before. Uh, I think this is the final mix version. We'll, uh, we'll have a listen. You've got an ego that drives me so crazy, but I 
It is. And what I've got on here is I've got this bullhorn. This is this really loud sound. If you missed this from a few weeks back, uh, I can try and dig up the video where I show you how to do it. But basically, you create a really loud sound, and then when you export the audio file, it's um, it reduced this the overall uh, highest dB range. So it works well for that. I've also used this FX hack here to, uh, to reduce the volume. That's why it was sounding a little bit low. That's probably a little bit too low. Let's just drop that to minus 10 and uh, play it from here. That looks about right. So uh, let's export this and let's pretend that this is our final mix and we're happy with it and we now want to master it. So I want to try and see if we can do this all here in the iPad box, here in the mobile. So uh, we're going to come out and we're going to export this song. Tap and hold. Share it. Because Sharon is Karen and Sharon is Karen. Share is a song. Uncompressed. Wav file. Uh, we're going to hit the open in button because that's the easiest way to do this. Yeah, don't, don't ever... um. Don't ever try and send directly from here. It always messes up unless you do open in. Once you do open in, it gives you all the options and it does the exporting first before it tries to connect to the other app. It's, yeah, I really need to do another video about it because, again, speaking of Q&A and GarageBand questions, a lot of the questions I get are from people trying to export and they're running into trouble because they're trying to send it straight to, uh, to iMovie or they're sending it out to other apps. I, I never like it. It never works. That first share sheet never works here in GarageBand. Always do your open in. That way it's just focusing on exporting the song. It's not trying to do anything with the other app. And then when it's exported, then share it over to the other app from there. Uh, uh, do you know how you can record two-hour screen recordings? Um, I wouldn't ever try to do, to do a two-hour screen recording. I would always do it in chunks and then edit it together because the screen recording app on iOS is notoriously clunky and you do not want to get one hour and 55 minutes into a screen recording and then have it fail. So I would recommend recording in say 20 minute chunks and then stitching them together. I know that might not work musically if you're doing particular things, but look, there, there are some limitations of, um, of screen recording and of, of iOS. And that's kind of one of them that if you want to try and do things for a long time, you're at the mercy of, uh, of things potentially failing. Uh, it's not cut and dry, but cut and dried. Oh, there you go. Yeah, champing. There it is. Uh, the first time I listened to it, I had to slow it down. Now I can keep up. I know. And uh, hopefully I have learned over time to be slower and lower. Because I, I used to talk very fast and quite high. I used to talk like this. I used to talk like I was a bit of a like I was a jockey that just won a race. And now I try to reduce. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a half an octave lower, and I'm uh, uh, what about twenty beats per minute slower? <laughs> Something like that. All righty. Um, let's uh, let's let's finish this. Uh, hello to uh, Melvin Evans. Uh, I'll I'll grab your comment in just a moment. Look, I'll put the little star next to it so I don't miss it. We've got a little comment starring here. Uh, so all good. Let's um let's jump in and let's send this to Audio Share firstly just to check again. Audio Share. I recommend it. Just get it. It works well. So that's looking good. Uh, okay, my old trash. So here's the reason. See how this is all nice and low? Look at all this headroom we've got. This is going to make it great for mastering. <laughs> because we've got this super loud bit at the start, we've got all this beautiful headroom, whereas otherwise, all of these peaks would be right up to zero dB, and that's not going to be no good for no one, see? But what we do need to do is make sure that we trim it first before we throw it into band lab. So we're going to go to our tools here. We're going to go to the trim and fade. We're going to tap and drag and hold. And if we just hold at the start here, it'll zoom in and we'll be able to locate it round about there at the start. Do the same at the end here. Tap, drag. Oh, we forgot to do that. Tap and drag. Hold. Make sure we're at a point where it's completely faded like that. <coughs> and uh, we'll, we'll, that'll be cl close enough. Close enough for us for, for today because we're not going to actually use this. So we'll just save. I'm not going to even test it. So now if we hit play. You got it. At the end. Yep, close enough for disco. All right. Oh, stop. So this is this file here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, share this file out and just save it somewhere easily accessible. And you know what? I, I'm a bit of a lazy bugger. So I go, I use my uh, downloads folder for my, it's kind of like my holding zone. It's where I just put things in in the short term. So I'm going to save this into my downloads folder like so. And now I know it's there. Right, let's open up BandLab and let's master using BandLab Mobile for the very first time. So we're going to go to BandLab 
This is a free app if you haven't used it before. You can create, it's a DAW, you can record in it, you can collaborate, you can share, you can post songs, you can import songs, you can do all sorts of things. But one of the things that you can do is mastering and I just have to find now how to do that. There we go, we hit the plus button. <coughs> now we can import a file, but I reckon there's a direct, there it is, it's down the bottom here. So here's the thing, someone was asking me about this during the week. There's two ways to do this. You can import your file here into a project and then master from there. But if you scroll to the bottom on this main screen, go to this mastering here, it goes straight to this one where you can just import your track. And if you've already trimmed your track, then you're good to go. You can jump straight in here and master it straight off. So let's try this with the plus button there. We'll go to the more button, which should bring up this. We've got this one here. It's the most recent, recent thing. That's the trimmed version. So thank you, iOS. You've You've helped me out in this one. We'll hit that one. It's preparing for mastering. It's going to import the track here into BandLab Mobile. And then here we go. It's going to play it. So it's playing. It's already playing that mastered version. So here we can actually, this is going to tell the difference. And because we've got lots of nice, delicious headroom, it's probably going to sound okay. So let's uh, let's try this one. So this is the unmastered version. You've got an ego that drives me so crazy. And then we can check any of these presets. So if we go to the universal preset. Uh, so yeah, it, it, look, it's, it's pretty loud to be honest. Oh, that fire preset. Is it just me or does that sound absolutely awful? Uh, I've never found a good use for the Fire one. The Universal one sounds pretty good. I just had my volume up too loud, sorry, on the iPad output, so that's why. So let's try that again. We'll go back. Oh, I'll make sure that the volume is set correctly here, and then we'll play the original. And then the Universal. That one's pretty good. Uh, let's try the Clarity preset. That's not bad. I reckon the tape preset might be nice for this one. That's pretty good. And we can AB it by going to the original and back to the mastered. So I'll play the original and then we'll flick between the original and the master to, uh, to take a listen. Don't hate it, quite like it. Uh, and look, keep in mind, mastering will also increase the volume. Volume sounds better, louder things sound better. In fact, um, way back in the day, a mastering engineer by the name of Ian Shepard did a test where he had two masters and the only difference between them was that one was one dB louder than the other. And every, like no other changes, no EQ, no compression, no limiting, no anything, one dB louder. Guess which one everyone preferred? Yeah, like 90% of people prefer the 1 dB louder version. So louder is definitely conceived or perceived as better. Uh, all right, let's hit the download button down here. This will prepare the audio. <coughs> Loud is more good, I know, right? Loud is more gooder. Uh, yeah, and, and look, it is. It's not bad. It's not going to It's not gonna take the place of, um, of doing something... Oh, what am I trying to say? Use your words, Pete. It's not going to take the place of you sitting in there meticulously mastering and changing settings and doing things. It's not going to take the place of a mastering engineer. But for a lot of folks, the, if you're just going to mix it and not master at all or do it this way, this way is going to be better for you. Yeah, that's my, that's my opinion. All right, let's save this to files and we'll stick this in the downloads folder too, just so we know where that one is. Let's jump back over to audio share, shall we? And bring it on into here. So audio share allows us to import by going to here, going to the file picker. And look, there it is. It's right there from now. Uh, tap that one. It'll bring that in as a new version. Uh, oh, that's interesting. It's exported as an M4A. So you can see, uh, whoop, wrong way. So you can see instantly there. Yeah, so that's the mastered waveform. A couple of things, a couple of interesting notes here. It doesn't seem to have even mastered it up to zero dB. So it hasn't limited it all the way. Because we gave it this, we gave it so much headroom, we may have over-headroomed it. That's interesting point number one. Interesting point number two 
it's exported as an M4A. And it doesn't seem to have given me the option at any point to export it differently. Let's take a listen to it anyway. I mean, it's good, but it's definitely compressed. What is it? It's a, yeah. it's a 127 kilobit AAC M4A file. I don't want that. No one wants that for mastering. This is good. This is a good thing. We're, we're, we're finding things out about this. Let's, um, let's have a look see. Let's go back to BandLab and see if we missed any option that uh, could do something different. So no, there is no other option. No, there's nothing under the dot. What is mastering? Uh, share. No, share is just... No, that's doing... That's not it. Um, yeah, there was definitely nothing. No, there's no option there. <coughs> so that, um, to be honest, makes this all but useless for distributing music. There's no way you're updating a 2.5 megabyte compressed 127 kilobit per second uh, M4A file. If you like, Maybe if you're sticking it on SoundCloud or Slaps or you're emailing it to someone, but no, there's no point. Mar- it, it defeats the purpose of mastering a song if you're then going, if your final master is a compressed file. So let's try adding it to the library because this might be the way to do it. So if we add it to the library, and this could be interesting. So the video I want to create out of this is how to master using BandLab Mobile. So I think we're going to have to do this. All right, so now if we jump out of there and we go into the mix editor, this is probably going to be the way we're going to need to do it. So now it's got this imported file in the mix editor and it's going to sound like this. All right, so that's cool. So if we come out of there, what we should now be able to do is if we go back to that. Oh, no, don't open it. Not in there. The bit where I can just view it. Uh, where do I go? My projects. Here we go. Uh, Toxic Ego, Mastered, Trimmed. All right. Uh, there we go. So this is where we want to do it. So we should be able to download here. Download as audio. Is this going to give us an option? It's not. I'm not happy about this. What, there's got to be a way. There's got to be a way for this to be able to download as a WAV file. Like, why would they not give the option in the mobile app to download as a WAV file? It's got to be there. Download. Download. Download as audio, download as video. What does it download as its video? <laughs> That's weird. That could be actually a cool option if you just want to stick it up somewhere. Uh, all right, we'll access, allow access to photos for now. Video exported. What what sort of video did it export? Um, all right, there, there's got to be a, I'm not, there you go. If anyone wants to try and help out with this, we'll, we'll leave it at that for now. But if anyone wants to try and help out with this, um, feel free to go and have a play and see if you can find out. I'll be doing some uh, research to see if we can work out how we can do that a bit better. But yeah, that's a, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. Hello, Tremor Bear. Hope you are doing well. Um, I've got a couple of uh, questions and things in here. I was going to show you, we are over time. And the tip of the week, I'll, I'll talk about this real quick and maybe we'll uh, we'll make it next week's uh, on next week's show. I was going to talk about the fact that GarageBand Mac doesn't have uh, a merge function. So to merge in GarageBand Mac, what you have to do, in, just in case you're wondering this, the merge function brings together a whole bunch of tracks. So if I wanted to bring these vocals together, what I could do in GarageBand is basically right uh, click on this, <coughs> hit the merge button and it will merge these three tracks into one audio file and it does all of that automatically. Here in GarageBand Mac, you want to do the same thing. You've actually got to come up to share. You've got to export it to a disk. You've got to then bring the WAV file back into here. It's a lot more of a pain. So I don't know why they don't have a merge option in GarageBand Mac when they have it in GarageBand iOS. Probably because GarageBand iOS was originally 16 track and they really needed the ability for you to be able to merge down there. Whereas they don't really need that ability in Mac because you've got a lot more tracks to play with uh, now. And you've got 32 tracks in iOS now too. So you really don't need it that much over there as well. <coughs> Uh, let's, uh, let's do, uh, Melvin Evans says, newbie here. I'm getting a slight buzz when I speak into the mic, clear and silent. I use an interface and iPad, but no powered USB. Mine has iPad. Is there a reason for the buzz? Mm. It's a good question. And we will go, we're into overtime, by the way, overtime. We're a little bit into the overtime here. So in terms of this one, um, 
the, the buzz that you'll be getting in when you're talking to the microphone, there's a few things that can cause that. The most likely one is some sort of ground hum or ground loop from the power that you're using. So there's a couple of ways around that. Turn off any devices that you've got nearby. The biggest culprits are things like printers, Wi-Fi routers, monitors, ironically i know it's hard to get away from monitors but if you can just move away from those things do that uh, and microwaves are terrible microwaves have so many different frequencies that interfere and, and uh, do dodgy things to your power you can uh, try plugging into a different power socket uh, you can try um, using a power conditioner as well there's things you can buy called power conditioners that can help with that uh, the other thing you can use is portable batteries so if you can get yourself away from all your electronic appliances this is why ipad and iphone is good if you can get yourself away from any uh, appliances and you plug in uh, if you need power using a portable battery so if you're using something like the the lightning to usb 3 adapter here and you plug this power instead of into ac power plug that into a power um, a little power bank that can work really well as well because then you've got no power coming in there so that's the main cause there are other things that can happen there's interference that can happen within the actual cables so you may want to check your cable. If you've got a different mic cable, you can try that because some cheaper mic cables are not well shielded and they can have some interference and some buzzing noise in there as well. So that's a few tips and a few of the more common things that I've found that happen with people. And sometimes the microphone too. Sometimes within the capsule of the microphone, there can be something vibrating in there. So there's a, there's a few things there that, uh, that might help you out. Is mastering the same knob turning mixing regarding reverb panning compression? Um, yeah, so mixing and mastering are slightly different things. Um, I've got videos here. So if you search Pete John's mixing mastering, I've got whole videos talking about mixing versus mastering. And uh, it'll tell you all the things you need to know, uh, which is cool. Uh, when I'm doing the Gotta Catch Em All sessions, I forget about the time and don't notice it's been an hour of screen recording. Fortunately, none failed. Yeah, look, screen recording's got much better these days. Uh, since iOS 13, I think it was, or 12, where they updated it to stereo recording and they kind of fixed some of the issues. The old, uh, when it first got added, iOS 11 screen recorder was absolutely shocking. The amount of time, that's why I'm bald. I've pulled my hair out from trying to do screen recordings on my iPad and my iPhone back then. So there you go. I know, I used to talk fast like I was champing at the bit. Spot on, spot on indeed. Uh, let's uh, come on down. Yes, hello, Tremor Bear. Uh, we'll see if there's any other final questions or comments or anything else that uh, we've got. Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep on scrolling. Uh, um. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, as I mentioned at the start, band lab mastering is indeed 16 bit. So, look, if it's 16 bit and we don't get, if it's 16 bit M4A at 127 kbps, yeah, it's, it's, it's a non starter. The browser version is 16 bit, but at 44 1 um, WAV file. So, that's fine. It's all good. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's why the pros recommend you volume match after you add an effect. And, and that would be good. It would be good if you had the ability to do more um, volume matching. Uh, and that's the problem. It's, it's hard. It's hard to volume match because every every plugin adds gain well most plugins anytime you're using a plugin that increases gain like compression or eq or even reverb or delay can sometimes add gain yeah you basically have to try and reduce that there's automated things i think there's one i can't remember the name of it i have to do some some investigating to, to try and I, I don't do it i just kind of turn it down a little bit myself to be honest um yes I have, that's right that was the audio equivalent of a dodgy jpeg from the 90s yeah yeah kind of pointless kind of pointless but well there's i've got to be missing something if there can't not be a way maybe this is why maybe this is why whenever i hear like these uh these band lab creators their music's not sounding as good because if they're using it on their phone or their ipad and they're getting like m4a aac outputs it's terrible yeah yeah exactly m4a master is no a non-starter it's just not it's just not worth it uh all right hello tom and co just dropping in to say hi and goodbye yeah just uh, just in time to say goodbye um uh, i had logic in the day before it was logic pro it was e-magic yeah right the manual was i know remember those old manuals that you had for software that were like bible size it was crazy uh that's good i've been cr in a cramped closet with all my devices really close yeah so just just do it do a process of elimination uh, melvin just go like one by one uh turning stuff off because you'd be well, you're probably not surprised, but the field... Oh, the other thing is, um, 
airplane mode. So if you're using your iPhone or your iPad, just go to your swipe, swipe to the corner and hit the little airplane. That's going to turn off your Wi-Fi receiver and the 4G and 5G radio receivers because they can add. Remember the old days where you used to have that when you were getting a phone call, you could tell you're about to get a phone call on the old analog phones, the analog mobiles, because you heard that. Well, yeah, that that's still there, but they're at different frequencies, so they're often not audible to the human ear, but sometimes they can add crap to you. So if you're recording and you're finding you're getting noise, um, go into airplane mode and it can actually help you out. All right. Uh, yeah, microwave as a vocal booth would be a very poor idea. Uh, kettle, electric kettle. Yeah. I mean, I used to work for, <laughs> I used to be, uh, I used to work for an electricity company. So uh, I learned a lot about electrical interference, uh, electric uh, meters as well. Look, that. You don't need to put your tinfoil hat on here. The, the the smart meters are not coming to destroy you. They're not they're not tracking your every movement. Well, they kind of are, but not in that way. Um, but they do have everything that has electromagnetic radiation that has a, a radio frequency that has a magnetic field is creating some sort of frequency. And you know what frequencies are? Uh, they're sounds. Most of them are inaudible because they're above a certain sound or below a certain sound. But if you're getting a hum, that 60 hertz or 50 hertz ground hum is the most common one, which is like a I'll do it here. Like that really low, but obviously quieter than that. So if you're getting that 50 hertz or 60 hertz, it's probably your power. So it's probably something to do with your AC power because uh, alternating current power works at 50 hertz or 60 hertz, depending on what part of the world you live in. Uh, so you can check for that. And then, yeah, other, other things that use radio frequencies yeah, that most of them are inaudible, but sometimes they'll either malfunction or they'll you'll pick them up uh, and your, your other equipment will go, hey, here's a sound, I'll just grab that and put that. What would it sound great if I put this other hum sound in your mix? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, the, the mic on the stage, the zap. I know, it's oh, there's nothing worse than that. Like most of it's usually just static electricity stuff, but yeah, there's been some people who have been seriously injured, injured? injured by, uh, by doing that. Yeah, no, no metal in your microwave. Don't do it, man. It's uh, it won't it won't end well. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> the only buzzing sound was due to a loose denture. Yeah, you gotta be gotta be careful of that. Gotta screw in your teeth. Make sure that they're ready to go. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, I think we're good. I know. Uh, well, yeah. Look, it, I've realised that I have more fun on these shows if we go off. I used to do um, I used to do sort of a home studio Q and A and ask me anything and stuff. So GarageBand Weekly's kind of become that a little bit that we go off on some weird tangents. But uh, yeah, it, it it's fun. It's good times. Uh, I, I like it and I enjoy it. So uh, if uh, if folks hang around, then that's good. Uh, speaking of hanging around, I'm not hanging around because we're ten minutes over time. The only final thing I want to say is uh, thank you everyone for being here. And uh, if you are in the market for any gear, you can use the gear guide at studiolivetoday.com slash gear. That is this one over here. Uh, or if you are learning GarageBand, studiolivetoday.com slash GarageBand, if I can spell. Oh, this is not going to be right, is it? Uh, not found. Studio Live Today. There it is. StudioLiveToday.com slash GarageBand. That's my GarageBand iOS FAQ where you can find a whole lot more answers to all of those questions that you've been wanting to know about. GarageBand. Toronto up four zip. Hooly dooly. Uh, I say tamper in five, right? Whew, yeah, my bracket's toast. My bracket's totally toast. Uh, Ron Ward, yeah, jump, jump on over for Rock and Ronnie Ward. I'll, I'll, I'll go over and see what Ron's up to in a little while as well, uh, if I'm not watching hockey for the rest of the morning, which I probably will be. Uh, thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, please, this week, be kind to yourself. Very important stuff. Please be kind to other folks. Please be kind to your internet. My internet and my computer both lasted an entire GarageBand weekly. It's a miracle. So thank you to the uh, the internet gods and uh, the, uh, the the technology uh, czars. Uh, and uh, I'll see you next time on GarageBand Weekly. Uh, why don't you take us out, Kronk Song? Come on, you can do it. Let's go. Garage Band. Bye, Garage everybody. Band Garage Band.